So here we are, section 5.3. This one's all about the tangent function. Uh, so let's get into this. So the purposes of this lesson are we're going to learn the characteristics of a tangent function. So it's slightly different than what we have learned with sine and cosine. We want to understand what the diagrams look like. As you'll see from the definition, um, they're a little bit different. And we want to solve some word problems involving tangent functions. This is going to be coming up in your test. So you want to make sure you understand how to do this. First of all, let's look at some characteristics. So the tangent function is defined as the length of the tangent line. So a tangent line is uh, a line that just touches um, a curve once. And you'll see that from the circle. So a tangent line from the x-axis to the intersection of the terminal arm if you extended it all the way out. I know that's confusing, so here's the diagram. So your vertical line here by the h, that is the tangent line to my unit circle. And you can see with this, we've got the diagonal blue line, that is the terminal arm of whatever angle. And if I were to extend that terminal line all the way to this tangent line, the height or the length of the line at the tangent line, that is the tangent value of whatever that theta is. So if I go tan theta, tan theta is going to be equal to the opposite over adjacent. And you can make a little right triangle there. And my opposite side is h. The adjacent side to the angle is 1, because that's the radius of our unit circle. And so we get the opposite is h, adjacent is 1, so h over 1 is h. And that is what the tangent function is. So this is a diagram of what it looks like. It's slightly different than using the x and y value on with the point at the unit circle. Now I've got a point on this tangent line. Well, that's why it's a little bit different. We can look at what the graph of this is. So if we say y equals tan x, here's what the graph looks like. Don't freak out. I'm not going to get you to graph this on a test. But it's good for you to know what it looks like. From this, you can see a few things. So we've got asymptotes. Those are the red dotted lines. Are at pi over 2. And then plus or minus pi. Increments of pi. Or n is just your integer number. So we've got pi over 2. If you add pi, you get 3 pi over 2. You add another pi, you get 5 pi over 2. Every time you add pi or subtract pi, you get an asymptote. The domain, so what are all the x values, are essentially all real numbers except these asymptotes. Basically just take what the asymptote equation is and say x does not equal those asymptotes. The range is all real numbers. Those blue lines extend all the way up forever and all the way down forever. Your zeros are the values when tan x equals zero. Those are at every pi. So zero, pi, two pi, three pi, negative pi, negative two pi, so on and so forth. You can see those on the graph. The period of a tan function is pi. This is unlike sine and cosine. With sine and cosine, it is 2 pi. The tangent function is pi. You can look at the graph here and notice that every pi, it you're back to the same point in your rotation. Let's try a few examples here. So given this diagram, let's determine what tan theta is and what that theta value is. You can see here my theta is in quadrant 2. If I extend this terminal arm with the blue line there, the point at which it, it contacts my tangent line, that is going to be what my tan theta is equal to. So tan theta is equal to whatever the value is away from the x-axis, which in this case tan theta is negative 2. x is always going to be 1 whenever we're looking at a diagram like this. So tan theta is negative 2. Now we need to figure out what theta is. First, we need to figure out the reference angle. 
So this should sound familiar from last, um, last chapter, trying to solve this kind of stuff. In order to get this, notice that we made two positive. Whenever we're solving for reference angle, make sure when you do the inverse tan of something, we're going to use the positive value. So the reference angle is the inverse tan of two, which is 1.107. So that's our reference angle. Then we need to take a look at what, what quadrant we're actually in. We are in quadrant two. Therefore, what we do is we take the pi minus my reference angle, which is 1.107. Get a number, we get 2.03. That would be the angle in radians, or we have 116.6 degrees. If you want to round that to 117, that's totally fine. Um, but there you go, that's your answer. Let's try it with this diagram now. Notice we're in quadrant three, so we need to extend that blue line to get it all the way up to the point one one. Our tan theta is one. Again, that's what the y value is. And we need the reference angle again. So we'll just do the inverse tan of one. We get that the reference angle is pi over four. And then since we are in quadrant three, we will go um, pi plus this reference angle. So we end up with five pi over four or 225 degrees. So that gives us what our angle is. Now I give you a tangent graph and we want to determine the value of certain, at a certain point. So if tan, if we're looking for tan pi, we just need to look on the graph and if you find where x is pi, you will see that tan theta will equal zero. Pretty straightforward. Let's try this one. So tan of negative pi over four, we look on our graph, we see that halfway between zero and negative pi over two is where we'd get negative pi over four, and this value is at one. Or sorry, negative one, not one. That taken from the graph. Then let's look at tan of negative three pi over two, and you'll see that this is our asymptote. So since this is the asymptote, this value is undefined. Now for some word problems. These ones are going to be tricky and just trying to get information out of the question. So I'll show you how we can get this. So we've got a searchlight scans along a prison wall. It rotates once every 24 seconds, meaning it rotates all the way around. If the searchlight is 25 meters from the wall, and is initially shown at the center of the wall, where does the light strike the wall after 20 seconds? So in order to do this, it might be easier if we just look at what a diagram looks like. So you see, here's our searchlight. It's at the center of the X, Y axis. If it starts at zero seconds pointing all the way to the right, it slowly rotates all the way around. So at six seconds, it's pointing at 90 degrees. At 12 seconds, we're all the way in the other direction, 18 down, and then back at 24 seconds, we're off to the right again. From this, and looking at the diagram, you can see we have a right angle triangle here, where we've got 25 meters is the X amount, D is my vertical amount, and typically this would be in terms of theta, and looking at our degrees and what it rotates around. But this word problem deals with time. So we're going to consider time as our x variable, essentially. So we're going to get tan of, instead of theta, now we've got time. Tan t is going to be the opposite, which is d, divided by the adjacent, which is 25. So we can get this equation, rearrange it, we get d equals 25 tan t. So that's where we're going to start off. Um, the next thing we need to figure out is what is the B value? B value, remember, we get from 2 pi over the period. So we're told here that it rotates all the way around in 24 seconds. So therefore, the period is 12. It's half of a full rotation. 
So b is pi, because remember, a full rotation is pi. It's no longer 2 pi. It'll be pi divided by 12. Plugging that into our equation here, we get d equals 25 tan pi over 12 t. This is our equation now for this situation. If we want to know when the light strikes or where it'll strike after 20 seconds, all we simply do is plug in 20 seconds in for time. Plug this in your calculator, and you get that the distance is negative 43.4 meters. So meaning instead of it being up the wall, it's going to be down the wall. Let's try, I think this is the last one. Let's try this one. So I've got a plane flying at this height, 40,000 meters. It's going to be heading directly toward an observer, just meaning we have something in two dimensions instead of three. And we want to determine what the equation uh, that represents, oh man, that S should be right beside it, represent extra space in there, that represents the relationship between the horizontal distance and the angle theta. Again, we can picture what this looks like. So there's the observer down at the ground. The plane is far away. We are told the plane is 40, 000, or 4,000 meters above the ground. And D is our horizontal distance that we're figuring out with this. So just like the previous one, we can look at, um, we can look at what is our tan theta equation. You'll notice we have a right triangle. So given theta in this situation here, if we are trying to do tan theta, tan theta is opposite over adjacent. So it's D over 4,000. Rearrange this, we get D equals 4,000 tan theta. Now this one doesn't have some sort of cyclical function. There's no period. So we don't have anything for a B value. We just have this as the relationship between it. So that's it. That's all there is for the tan function. Like I said, the tan function, I'm not going to get you to graph it, but you need to be able to interpret what that graph means, what it's saying, and try to figure out um, what, what you need to solve from that and be able to make an equation for tan functions. Okay, so this, the, the movie for this video, this one might be a little bit well, quite a bit big, but you can give this a try. So the my next favorite movie is, well, how I'd describe it is you've got two guys who can't decide whether or not they want to go forward in time or go backwards in time. That, that's all I'm going to give you. So if you have a guess, let me know in class, and I will see you later.